Thank you very much. Next up, we have um, next up we have Sean Donnellan and uh, Patrick Gilmore and Christian Kaufman. As uh, you may have heard, uh, Akamai did a um, uh, analysis and published it second quarter of this year that a lot of people uh, have been looking at as sort of a, a broad-based source of data about uh, internet topology and growth rates and whatnot. And uh, that's what they're here to tell you about. Go for it, Sean. Um, I'm Sean Dylan. We got uh, Patrick Gilmore and Christian Kaufman who will help me with any questions if there are any questions. Um, <laughs> So the academics here will probably notice a trick I'm going to do with the statistics. Um, bear with me. <laughs> so unique IP addresses. Um, basically all this data is uh, based upon what Akamai is seeing people are making requests from. So we're seeing requests from about 346 million unique IP addresses on the internet. And as you heard Dr. Surf this morning mention, um, other people are estimating there's probably over 500 million uh, IP addresses on the internet. So obviously there, we're not seeing everything. Uh, we estimate there's probably about a billion users behind those IP addresses that are hiding out behind DHCP, NAT, and so forth. Um, and uh, for some countries, uh, we saw less than 1,000 IP addresses. And when you get down that small, um, it, it gets hard to make any sense out of the numbers. Uh, for example, uh, one of the small countries, the Vatican, uh, a very small country, very few number of IP addresses, happens to have probably the best IP connectivity in the world as far as country level goes. <laughs> but, and very high density of IP addresses per number of citizens in the Vatican. But it doesn't, it, the statistics don't make sense at, at, at that kind of level. So that's kind of the trick uh, that the academics are going to get upset about, that we've kind of excluded a whole lot of data. Uh, but the data that we've left with, we think is somewhat interesting. Um, so obviously the United States is, is still big, China is coming up, um, and so forth. So then we looked at the other interesting thing for us is uh, what speeds are people actually seeing on the internet? Uh, we all know the advertising speeds uh, that, that uh, get advertised. Uh, it's like uh, we're selling Giggy or whatever. But what's the typical speed that people are seeing? And rather than try and break it, uh, tell you what's the speed in each country is, because then it gets difficult which provider you're talking about and so forth, we're grouping it by kind of really broad ranges of speeds. So greater than five megabits per second. South Korea, over 64% of the IP addresses that we see in South Korea got over five megabits per second. Um, all the way down to uh, number 10, Denmark, 18% of the users were getting over five megabits per second. Um, that's even though some of those countries were advertising uh, much higher speeds, these are the speeds that, that we were seeing in, in practice. And you'll notice that the drop-off happens pretty quick. It goes from 60, is it just me or? Uh, the drop-off happens pretty quick from 64% down to 32% for Sweden, down to 18% for Denmark. On the other end of the scale, we have the, what we see as the slowest countries. Again, we eliminated 38 countries because we just didn't have enough data. And some of those countries uh, would probably be on the slow end. But like I said, you got some of the 38 countries would be on the high end also. Um, most of the countries that we see with slow speeds tend to be islands on the other end of satellites and uh, in Africa. Um, the measurement limitation here is this is what Akamai is seeing. Um, we don't have servers in every country. We don't, me we don't measure everything on the internet. This is just uh, some data that we have. Um, and most of these you, you would not be surprised at. Uh, Rwanda we see as one of the slowest uh, um, countries with over 94% of the connections at less than 256K. Um, just for interest, the United States um, is 96 
uh, with uh, about 8.2% of the connections at less than 256K. But we're in the business of making money, so it's like the max and min is interesting, uh, but really what is it that the sweet spot that we need to aim at for getting data to customers? And right now, it looks like the sweet spot right now globally is about two megabits per second. Uh, about 60% of the global IP connections that we're seeing are, are greater than two megabits per second, and obviously the rest are less than two, uh, two megabits per second. Um, here, the, if you compare this graph to the earlier graph of the five megabits per second, um, you'll notice that, again, South Korea is uh, number one with over 90%. Um, being over two megabits per second. And the United States drops out of the top 10 to number 20 with uh, just over 70% achieving over two megabits per second. Again, these are actual speeds, not advertising speeds. So on the TV, uh, they're advertising, you get 20 megabits per second or whatever. But we're seeing uh, about 70% uh, are getting greater than two megabits per second. <coughs> And finally, um, we have the link for the, the full report. It uh, has a whole bunch more statistics and, and uh, things that will get the academics mad at us <laughs> for uh, doing uh, brutal things with statistics. Uh, but it's data. And uh, as someone else said, data is data. Uh, so are there any questions? Yes. Now we're in trouble. Uh, first of all, will these charts be available and are they public? Yes, okay, they, they're on the website right now. Uh, the second question has to do with uh, some of the other uh, statistics, which I think you probably captured. You've got all those servers scattered all over everywhere. At one time it was 15,000 of, of them on 1,100 nets, and I don't know what the numbers are today. Yeah. Uh, but they're all talking to each other. So you're getting a lot of interesting data about latencies between these pairs of devices. Is there any information along those lines that the Alchemy would be comfortable sharing uh, publicly? to show us something about kind of what's the global internet weather like from the perspective of the measurement stations that Akamai is running? Um, yes, uh, actually on the Akamai website we do have something that's put on by our marketing department so it's slightly fluffy, uh, <laughs> but if uh, Patrick or Christian has any more details. So, um, the, I'm pushing, nothing's happening. Nothing so the real, this one is live. Uh, So Don't main, push. I that think one, push means mute. That one was fine. Hello. <laughs> so the answer is that um, the internet sucks and everywhere is broken. Um, but uh, we don't publish all of the stats that we have, but there's a little of them uh, published on the web page. If you want something more detailed, then you can come talk to us in private and we can give you more data. Uh, you don't even have to be a customer or anything. We just don't give it out willy-nilly. Um, and we might have to sign an NDA, but we give we have a Obviously, I mean, our job is to map the internet, so we have that information. Chris Welty from Switch is with you. Um, did you, for these statistics, did you take into account the server loads of the Akamai servers? Because um, sometimes it could be that the servers are the bottlenecks. No. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> in, in all seriousness, um, Akamai servers are not allowed to go over 60%, so that's not the problem. So uh, I, I put it on my slide and skipped over it. Basically, we don't throw out the individual TCP sessions, but we do control the number of connections to a server, so the servers don't get overloaded. Okay. So we spread the load out among servers, so no individual server will get overloaded. So generally, the bottleneck will always be at the end user side and not on the server side. This also means no overloading at uh, the data centers for the access to uh, Correct, because if, if we see overloads in one data center, we'll try and serve from other, other locations. And at this point, I'm moving into marketing, and we got other people who can talk to you about that. Um, in, just to put a little more on that, remember Akamai's job is to make sure that people can get served as quickly and reliably as possible. Uh, ignoring the, the marketing side of this, if we see someone being throttled, if we, and we actually look at things like TCP retransmits, if there's a lot of TCP retransmits, we'll stop using that server or stop sending that user to that server. That's the point of Akamai. So um, I'm not going to lie to you and say it's never happened, but by and large, the overwhelming majority, I mean very high 90 percentage of our um, sessions are not throttled at the data center or the server level. One more? 
Oh, we have two people. Oh. Yeah, it's, uh, it's especially the first rule, your last point is in addition to actual link speeds, did you observe overall link quality based on various countries? Uh, that's the TCP um, statistics, which we don't actually give out. Okay. And, and then the one other follow-up to that is, uh, in addition to profiling the various countries you saw, did you have any data as far as uh, the efficiency of peering, as far as uh, how, how close were the Akamai clusters to the, to the clients you observed? We do have that. I don't know if we're allowed to give it out. Um, it's hypothetically possible that something on the order of 92% of all Akamai servers are within one AS hop of the end users by demand, meaning, you know, take the total number of megabits and divide it in. Um, but of course, you didn't hear that. So are these, sti <laughs> are these statistics provided to customers? Like if, if someone hosts on Akamai, are they able to get any of these statistics about their data? If you pay us, we'll tell you anything. But um, <laughs> I don't, I'm sorry, I don't work in sales. I don't know what we actually get yeah. out to individual customers. Fortunate that the U.S. government is such a big customer and FOIA <laughs> requests are really good for getting this stuff. Um, that's possible. Thank you. I think this would be a quick question. Um, so the, the uh, well, I may have missed it earlier. I'm Daryl Newcomb. Um, the, uh, is the data rate here representative of a single TCP session, or is it the peak for like you know, parallel requests from, from web clients? Or the, these are uh, these are broken down by single TCP sessions, not aggregate of TCP sessions uh, to a single client. And another quirk I mentioned: uh, there are, uh, the TCP experts here know there's various uh, quirks in widely deployed uh, TCP stacks that also affect some of these measurements. Um, but that would be true um, in any case. Okay, looks like that's it for the questions. Um, I Thank assume you. your analysts also noted that countries with pirates were at the bottom group and <laughs> countries with ninja were at the top group and the <laughs> countries with cowboys were in the middle. Anyway, okay, so um, thank you, Sean and Patrick and Christian. <laughs>